Hello everyone, my name is Chantel, and in this tutorial, I will be going over ActiveHDL's Design Flow Manager. This manager is designed to automate the processes of design entry, synthesis, and implementation of a typical design path, as well as simulation throughout these phases. As you'll see in this tutorial, the Design Flow Manager generates an easily readable design flow chart where you can perform all these processes thanks to the bi-directional communication between the active HDL environment and the selected external third-party vendor tools. To demonstrate the Design Flow Manager, I'll be using a sample design. First, let's go to Help and go to Open Example. In VHDL's Designs, under Samples, we'll open up the Frequency Meter workspace. Now that we have a workspace opened as well as an active design, we can begin using the Design Flow Manager. To access this, we have to go to Preferences underneath Tools. In Environments, go to Flow and check the Enable Design Flow Manager box. Click OK, and now we should be able to open up the Design Flow Manager by clicking on this Design Flow button located in the main toolbar. You can see here that the Design Flow chart is very minimal since we haven't configured any settings yet. And while the sample design may already have files, Note that you can access the design editors for block diagrams, HDL code, and FSMs right here. After creating files, you can simulate them using the Functional Simulation button. To do this, just head over to the Options button right next to it. And from there, you can set the options of how you want to simulate your design. You can run simulation manually by inputting your input files along with the desired macros or you can run it with an already existing DO or TCL script in the design. For this one, it's going to be the runme.do located underneath the test bench folder over here. Then once you're done with that, you're gonna hit okay and you're gonna run the simulation. All right, now we can go into the design's flow settings. Click on the flow settings button and from here, you can select the third-party tools you'd like to use for synthesis and implementation, as well as the device family you'll be implementing into. When you select a vendor tool, the vendors in bold indicate selectable vendor tools, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to be using Altera Cordis 2 14.1 for both synthesis and implementation. And I'll just stick with this Cyclone device as well. Once the settings have been verified, just click OK. Notice now that the Synthesis and Implementation button has been added to the Design Flow Manager, as well as more buttons, which we'll get into a little later. But for right now, I'm going to run the Synthesis and Implementation process. Before we can do that, let's make sure that ActiveHDL is pointing to the appropriate executable path for our vendor tool. Head over to Tools again, and go to Preferences, Underneath Environments in Flows, we're going to go to Integrated Tools. From there, you will see the tool name as well as an additional option underneath it called Location. For the Location option, we'll need to have it point to the appropriate vendor tool executable file. That would be underneath for Cordis 2 14.1, underneath Al Altera 14.1. Cordis, and there is the executable for that. Click OK when done. Just as a little side note, if you were to select two different vendor tools for synthesis and for implementation, there would be separate buttons that would appear for each of them. And so now let's head over to the Options button next to it. From there, you could specify the parameters. Files listed with a red number and arrow indicate that they will be synthesized. Make sure to select the top level unit in main. In this case, it's going to be frequency underscore top. And then you can choose to run the processes in batch or GUI mode. All these tabs above have settings that you can change for each stage of the synthesis and implementation process. Keep in mind that these settings will vary depending on the selected vendor tool. Once you're done, click OK. And now we can run the synthesis and implementation process. Just click on the synthesis and implementation button to run the processes. Running in batch mode will open up the batch mode window. 
like the one that you could see right here, and you could see its progress until completion. If you decide on running in GUI mode, the vendor tool will launch its application to where you can synthesize and implement from there. Once it's finished, you can view the reports created during the process by clicking on the report button. You can also see the status of the process with the little status flag symbol next to the button. And now you should see a new timing folder that was created within the active design. This folder contains your netlist file, which is generated in either VHDL or Verilog, as well as a SDF timing delay file. You're going to need these in order to run a timing simulation. Before doing a timing simulation, verify that these files are present by going to Options and checking if they're there. Click OK when done, and from there just click on the Timing Simulation button. Now I can talk about the other two buttons that appeared on the design flowchart. So this is the Tools button. It contains additional design entry flow tools. And next to it, the Analysis button contains Post Layout tools. The options containing these buttons will actually vary depending on the vendor tools you've selected. Like for example, in Post Layouts, you can see that we have a Logic Analyzer tool from Quartus. And the last thing you'll notice on this flowchart in the Design Flow Manager is that it has the option of exchanging constraints for a PCB interface. You would have to specify conversion settings prior to running the import or export process for the first time. With the Design Flow Manager, the interface actually detects the flowchart settings and automatically selects the tools along with a target device family. To specify the input and output files required, click on Options and select your files from there. Select whether you're importing or exporting the PCB file then select your PCB file you want to read from or write to. And lastly, select the tools you want for synthesis and implementation, if they're not already set to what you want. Click OK when you're done. From there, you can run the process by clicking on the PCB interface button. And with that, this marks the end of the Design Flow Manager tutorial. I hope this helps you guys with your active HDL designs. And thank you guys for watching.